Indian summer. Hello and uh, welcome to the Anglo Sikh Virtual Museum. My name is Gurinder Singh Man. I'm head of the Sikh Museum Initiative. I'm joined here today with Taranjit Singh from Taran 3D. And today we are going to be talking about the Anglo Sikh Virtual Museum. The first object we want to discuss is what we call the Charena. So the word Charena means in Persian is four mirrors. So essentially it's a breastplate. And this particular breastplate is actually from uh, the late 1600s and it belonged to one of the, the what we call the founder of the Khalsa, Guru Gobind Singh. And he actually wore this in the battle, what we call the Battle of Bagani Saab. And in that particular battle, the arrows were shot within this breastplate and there's a kind of a lot of history related to how this was actually used in battle. But the interesting thing also is that um, the actual um, workmanship um, actually also centers on the, the words of the Sikh scriptures being employed on this particular charina itself as well. So it's actually verses from the Sikh scriptures and it actually just kind of shows you how there's a merging of the worshipping and also how words of the Sikh scriptures can actually be kind of orientated in material objects as well. So we're going to move on to the next object now. We're going to look into the Kohinoor diamond. So for most people who are aware, the Kohinoor diamond was considered like to be one of the most expensive diamonds in the world in the early 1800 period. And um, it actually had moved hands, should we say, or was appropriated by different powers from time to time, whether it be from originally from India, then the Afghans taking it, and then eventually Maharaja Ranjit Singh appropriating the actual Kohinoor diamond from Shah Shuja, who is from Afghanistan. So what we're seeing here now is the Kohinoor diamond as it looked before the British took it, essentially. So um, it's got like the three parts to the diamond. And uh, also what we have is we ha actually have the actual um, the amulet here as well. The amulet actually does exist and is actually in the Royal Collection here in the UK. The actual diamonds, as some people may or may not know, were actually recut. And then what took place was the diamond was actually demonstrated in the Great Exhibition of 1851. Then after that, um, eventually the diamond has actually now been uh, kind of cut, you know, or redeveloped several times and now actually is in the Queen Mother's crown, which is at the Tower of London. So it just shows you how different kind of um, histories there is connected to the Kohinoor diamond. And in this day and age, you know, there's always calls by various people from India and Pakistan saying we would like this diamond back. And, you know, that kind of narrative and that discussion keeps taking place on a yearly basis. OK, so we're going to talk about some objects now related to Sophia Dilip Singh. So who was Sophia Dilip Singh? So we know about the suffragette movement in the UK. And Sophia Dilip Singh was the granddaughter of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. So Sophia Dilip Singh, um, you know, born here in the UK. And eventually her objects have now actually kind of gone into various kind of collections. So we're going to start off with the Panjangla next. So that's an actual orientation of a jewellery which um, is actually worn by, by women actually and if you look at the great workmanship here on the actual object itself as well, you can see the kind of detail which was actually created in the Lahore Darbar or Lahore court. So just to kind of give a bit of provenance to this as well, um, Sophia Dalip Singh's grandmother so to speak, Maharani Jindankor, who was you know, the wife of Maharaj Rajit Singh, it was her jewellery which had been passed down to Maharaja Dalip Singh, then from Dalip Singh to passing it down to Sophia Dalip Singh. So these are all come down from the Lahore court, as we just mentioned about the so richness of the objects which were created during Maharaja Ranjit Singh. So this is one of the objects, like I said, which is in a private collection. And we're going to move on to the earrings now, I think. It would be a great choice as well. These are actually what we call a pair of gold pendants, essentially. So we've got the petals there at the bottom as well. And, you know, whilst they would be very, very small in size, it just shows you that what we can do with this kind of technology. We're now going to move on to um, the Patiala sword, basically. So, um, so it's interesting, as we've been um, kind of digitising these objects and as we've been actually kind of um, working with various museums, We've actually learned a lot about history as well. Well, how does these objects come to the UK as well? And in this particular case, we've got what we call a Kandar pistol. So let me just explain what a Kandar is. Kandar is 
referred to as a double-edged sword. And then connected with this object is we have a small percussion pistol here as well. And this was very, very, I would say this is more ceremonial, so it would not have been used in battle. And it actually belonged to one of the Maharajas of the Patiala state. And interestingly, um, this was um, gifted after the 1850s and some of the Maharajas were in alliance with the British during that time as well. So this was actually a gift technically. But let me just explain in detail the history as well. So the Maharajas of Patiala, Jind and Nabba had actually sent some of these items over for an exhibition in Paris. And interestingly, a new museum was being set up in Nottingham called the Castle Museum. So they actually went with the help of what we call, um, which is the v &A Museum now, to actually visit Paris and they actually bought these items from that exhibition. And generally, um, not many people have seen these items because of the fact that um, you know, the museum has not put these on display. So we were able to go there, digitise this object and actually show it in its own glory for the first time, essentially. When you actually pick up this sword and you swing it around, it creates a swishing noise because there's actually balls within this area here which gives it another effect. Something very, very unusual, but you know, very, very ceremonial in that particular sense. So this um, particular sword will be on display when the Castle Museum, which is redesigning its museum, is actually going to go live. Okay, so now we're going to switch to, um, say, um, the coin. Yeah, that'd be great, Taron, thanks very much. So essentially, during the mid-1800s, um, um, when I talked earlier on about the Anglo-Sikh War, so the Sikh uh, Empire fought with the British East India Company, and these objects were actually, well, it's not an object as such, it's an actual medal with a clasp, and was actually given to British soldiers when um, they'd actually finished one of their campaigns. So this particular object has the image of Queen Victoria on it. And the idea is it, it mentions the army of the Sutlej. So the actual anglo sikh wars were referred to, or the first anglo sikh wars called the, for the Sutlej War, basically. But the interesting part is this aspect here. Whilst it mentions Sobral, which was one of the battles, 1846, it's these relics here. So this kind of puts in perspective the idea of the British East India Company defeating the Sikhs, but as we talked about earlier on, they then took over the Tosha Khanna, the treasury of the Sikhs, and it's not better depicted than what the British actually depicted on their own medals as well, which kind of puts things in perspective. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a helmet, actually. So um, it's what we call a Sikh helmet, and this is actually in the Royal Armouries at, at the moment. So we've been working with the Royal Armouries in Leeds and this particular helmet, um, again, you know, we think it's from the Lahore period as well. But if we look at the detail related to this as well, it's absolutely phenomenal. And it's got the chain mail which drops down on this particular object as well. And the interesting thing about these objects is that um, whilst we look at the, the Sikhs and the turbans, for instance, um, the idea was to actually kind of create that environment where the actual hair which is normally tied up at the top is given some kind of area to actually kind of rest on as well if that makes sense so these were actually designed actually for Sikhs um, and not for any other warriors due to the way that Sikhs wear their hair and, and they actually have it in a top not if that's how we can describe it okay so um, what we're doing now is we're going to actually demonstrate um, what the Sikh objects are like in a virtual reality environment so Taron here is actually now got a virtual reality headset on and he can actually see the environment with various objects in it. But firstly, we're starting off with this cannon here, again from the Lahore period. And the interesting thing is, you know, it's almost like you can touch it, you can almost like feel it and actually get to grips with what the cannon could actually look like. Maybe in another iteration, we may look at into how we can actually fire a cannon as well. So, you know, we are working on different ways we can actually use this in a 3D environment. So, moving on from the cannon, we've actually got next to it what we call a Khalsa or Sikh Empire Standard. So this was one of the army flags which was actually employed during the Anglo-Sikh Wars and um, was one of the flags or a number of flags which were found on the battlefields of the Anglo-Sikh Wars um, and brought over to the UK. So the uh, Governor General in charge, uh, Lord Dalhousie, he'd actually procured a minimum of 10 of these in his own collection and many of these were actually sold in um, auctions and now covet various um, 
private collections all across the world, essentially. So this is one of those battle standards which was used like in the wars, for instance. But again, what Taran is showing is like um, with our technology, we can actually pick up the standard and actually move it around as well. So just giving it that kind of, you know, that great immersive experience, uh, which sometimes you can't get when you have these objects. And I know for a fact that most museums would never let you even handle some of these objects in, in this way. So we move on next to the actual Lahore shield there. So this is one of the objects that we looked at on the actual touch screen but now again what Taran is actually doing now is actually he can pick up the actual shield as well so he can actually show it like if he was actually possibly in the battlefield himself and you know you can get a sense of size and proportion as well as to what this um, shield looked like but more importantly what it would have looked like during a particular battle for instance so it's a very very decorative um, shield like we've said and you know it looks like we've got examples of peacocks on there as well and the actual workmanship is actually really, really elaborate, which we discussed as well. So we'll move on to the Guru Nanak coin, for instance. So this particular coin um, is was part of the Lahore period. And again, what this demonstrates is um, a coin which is actually issued by Maharaj Ranjit Singh, who's seated on the left. We have a what we call a Nishan Sahib, or a Sikh flag again. And on the right hand side, we actually have the founder of the Sikh faith, Guru Nanak, on the right hand side. So it was almost like Ranjit Singh was paying homage to the founder of the Sikh faith. And um, the actual text which is on there is actually not in Punjabi, it was actually in Persian actually, because Persian was considered a courtly language, not just across India, but also within Punjab as well. So it was actually used widely um, during that time. So that was actually kind of given at, um, at a specific wedding so there is only a handful of these around as well next we're going to move on to what we call the avatar sword of uh, containing guru nanak so we mentioned guru nanak was the founder of the sikh faith but this particular sword actually belongs to in a private collection and belongs to Sukhbinder singh paul who's based in london and he actually bought this for, from an auction and essentially this particular sword demonstrates the avatars of Vishnu. But what we have on one of the cartouche panels is Guru Nanak himself. So it kind of just shows a blending of various mythological um, avatars, but with Guru Nanak in there as well. And like I said, we've actually kind of done um, examples where we've actually had the sword side by side with the actual touch screen as well, just kind of show the kind of resemblance of the real sword compared with the digital version as well. Next, we'll move on to the Patiala sword again, just to kind of demonstrate how that actually looks in a 3D environment. So like I said, what would actually take place is when that actual sword was actually moving around, due to the balls which are actually located on the right hand side, it would actually produce a swooshing kind of feature. And like I said, it was mainly kind of considered to be ceremonial, but you know, it just shows you the great workmanship as well. And within our technology, what we can actually do as well is we can either make the actual object as great as it was from the time it was created or we can leave it with all the kind of embellishments and we can leave it with some of the damages done and the weathering on some of the job objects as well it just really depends how we actually sometimes formulate what kind of aspect of the sword we want to actually demonstrate and then moving on um, we're going to actually look at um, the uh, another set of swords actually so these are two type of swords which actually um, possibly used by the Sikhs, but also used by generally um, various armies as well um, in it, within India. And um, so we, what, what this sword is called is, uh, we've got the Tal Talwar sword, for instance, and the Sikhs pre predominantly did use that in many, many of their battles, for instance. So it is very common that we talked earlier on about the Kandar for being a very prominent Sikh-related sword, but the Talwar was also prominent as well. What we're also going to do now is actually to kind of demonstrate what we saw earlier, which is the Jarenna, the actual um, breastplate of Guru Gobind Singh. So this time around, within the virtual reality experience, you can now actually see, you know, the actual sizing of it. And, you know, technically you can even pretend that you're wearing it as well. So, you know, it kind of brings you closer to these objects in a way you would never be able to do, like I said, um, previously. So. I think that's the key thing we've been trying to do is actually bring Sikh objects and also some of these objects which do have an Anglo-Sikh history to life essentially. 
and as part of our road shows and as part of our showcases, not just here in the UK, this object was first actually demonstrated in New York and um, San Francisco back in 2016. And it just kind of showed us what the way was forward would be in terms of actually digitizing these objects for the masses and making sure that you know people know a little bit more about the history and the great heritage that we have. So that's what Taran's actually demonstrated now. And what are we going to do now? Just kind of recap, basically, what we've demonstrated today. And I think it's the key thing, just as part of the An Indian Summer Festival, is that, um, you know, it's not just the people who are watching the festival, but people around the world as well, who get to get an insight of where these objects came from. So like we said earlier, they came from, many of these came from the Punjab, which is in India. But um, for those who don't know, Punjab was actually split into two as part of partition, so many of these objects actually come from the Pakistan side of, uh, of the Sikh Empire. And then once these objects came to the UK, they were kind of proliferated all across in various different museums and private collections, and the Sikh Museum initiative in conjunction with Taran 3D is now working on digitising objects, and we'd also like to serve a great thank you to the Heritage Lottery Fund who's funded this project, and to actually say thanks very much for an Indian summer. Thank you.